All right, everyone. Welcome to our Senate meeting. My name is David Munoz Sarabia. I am your SGA Vice President. Um, we welcome everyone here today. Um, I'm going to call this meeting to order at 5.32 p.m. Awesome. Uh, let me get my screen shared. Of course, if you're tuning in via Teams um, to get closed captioning, um, there's the three dots in the top right hand corner. Speakers in the audience, make sure that whenever you're speaking in the mic, you're speaking clearly, slowly and directly into the mic. All righty. And now today is October 13th. All right, roll call. If you hear your name, please state here or present. Senator Shiloh. Present. Senator Brown. Present. Senator McAdams. Present. Senator McDowell. Present. Senator Lee. Present. Senator Banerjee. Present. Senator Castellanos. Senator um, Guevara. Present. Senator Johnson. Here. Senator Mosley. Senator Sanchez Martinez. Senator Tovar. Senator Van Voris. Here. Senator M. Here. Senator Cal. Here. Senator Schulte. Here. Senator Quibentoro. And then, voting for the record, Senator Cassiano is present. For today's agenda, um, we have um, Dr. Wythe going to present a COVID-19 update. We are going to have our Senate officer election. I'm going to appoint our secretary, executive reports, approval of minutes. Um, for new business, we have a Senate appointment today uh, for the College of, or the Honors College. We have one piece of legislation under emergency status, which is F 2021 R3. We also have F 2021 R4 and 5. After that, we have college reports, announcements, and of course, adjournment. Dr. With, um, the floor is all yours. Hello. Thanks for having me. Glad to be back. It doesn't feel like it's been two weeks already, does it? Seems like just yesterday I was here. So anyway, Health Alerts website, if you want to pull that up, feel free. But um, our number Friday was sitting at 46. 39 of those um, are have some campus impact. So you can see that we're still lingering that same area as we have been in the past. Um, as you work your way through the number of cases, the curve, you, if you'll if you want to take a look, still continues to come down. Our cases, our weekly cases are um, still lower now than they have been. So we are retreating in the same way that mirrors what's happening in the in our local world. You'll see that we had 1,301 tests last week, um, which was a little bit more than the week before. Not as much as we had during the mandatory testing, but if you'll remember, we identified a group of people that we've asked to test. Um, and so, and that group number sits around, tw we actually had 2,600 that were on the list um, the first time. Um, for my competitive spirit, if you'll remember last Friday, the University of Houston was sitting at 75, Texas State was sitting at 78, Texas A&M was at 109, and Texas Tech was at 33, finally lower than us. So that's where we sit. The first interval of the volunteer testing is going on now. It ends Sunday night at 11.59 p.m. Um, and so we're, we will not be able, this was a question last time, we'll not have the ability to be able to determine of those volunteers how many tested and report that out. We will continue to show the number of tests that we do on campus. And so um, that will obviously continue to happen throughout the rest of the semester. That's my update, unless you guys have questions. All right, um, Senator Grant. So not knowing 
the previous time we saw active cases and you came and gave us report, are we inclining, declining, or pretty much just slowly going down? Because, I mean, these seem like pretty low numbers for, you know, what you hear in the news and stuff like that. So We're going down. So if you look at the curve online, you'll see that if we are going down. Our weekly case numbers continue to go lower um, than they were the, the previous week. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Of course, guests in the audience, if you'd like to ask a question, raise your hand. We can get you recognized. Um, any other questions? Can someone recognize the gentleman in the blue shirt in the back? Mr. Speaker. Yes. I move to rec recognize the gentleman in the back. Senator Johnson seconds. All right. Um, can someone, do you have a microphone nearby or someone can pass a microphone? Um, and then the floor is yours for any questions for Dr. Wick. All righty, am I coming through well? Um, so is there any um, inclination from the university in moving towards coming back to providing uh, housing for students to quarantine in if they um, uh, contract COVID-19 this semester? So we've been able to accommodate anybody who has needed help but we don't have the space because we're 500 beds close, um, fewer than we had last year. We just don't have the space to offer for everybody. Um, but we have not sent anybody home. We have, I mean, we've not sent anybody out on the street without a place to go. We have been working with each student um, who has to, to leave housing to quarantine or to isolate. And thus far we've been able to do that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Um, can someone recognize? Mr. Speaker. Yes. I move to rec recognize the individual in the back. Senator Johnson seconds. All right. Awesome. You have the floor. Um, is this okay? Yes. Okay. Um, so this is less of a question and more of a general recommendation, I suppose. Okay. Um, I it personally, in my own judgment, believe that it would be a good idea to return to the mandatory testing. I have seen that the numbers have been going down as well, though I do think that there is the potentiality for that to be due to the lack of mandatory testing and a swap to voluntary testing. So I think that it would be better for having a more clear picture of what the COVID numbers are looking like to have a return to that if possible. Are you considering that at any point in time? So we will continue to um, evaluate where we are, what our numbers are, what's happening in the world around us, what's happening in Denton County, in the North Texas region, and in the state of Texas, the country, all of it, and make determinations based upon the information that we have. And so if there is um, we see a rise in cases if there are those circumstances or things around us necessitate us going back to mandatory testing. We certainly are willing to do it. We just don't feel like we need to be doing it right now. I also had a second recommendation. Okay. Uh, this is less so, but if something as radical as a mask mandate is not possible, then I would like to recommend having posters put up around the campus saying, say from the CDC, I know that they have very good posters that you could print out and hang up saying how to wear a mask, how to wear a mask properly, how to take one off. And I think that it would be good information to have available to the general public who does wear masks. I'm certainly willing to consider that. We do link to all of that on the Health Alerts website so students and folks can see that. Um, the information that we've gotten um, in many different ways. I can put posters everywhere, but I'm not sure everybody's going to look at them, but I'm happy to do that. We do have signage around about encouraging people to wear masks, but if we don't feel like they're wearing them properly, happy to, to put some posters around campus. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Can someone recognize the um, person in the corner? Mr. Speaker. Yes. I move to rec recognize the individual uh, over there. Senator M. Second. All right. Can someone pass the microphone? Um, that'd be awesome. Thank you. And then you have the floor. Uh, hi, I'm with the North Texas Daily. Uh, you said that there had been uh, 1,301 uh, testings last week. Last week, correct? Correct. 
and uh, do these include or I, I can't hear you right now. Okay, I'm sorry. sorry. This is my first one. Uh, so does this include the 2000 randomly selected individuals as part of whatever phase of uh, testing we're at? I think second phase. The, those that would have tested as part of that would be in that number, I guess. Okay, thank you. Sure. All righty, any other questions for Dr. Wick? If not, thank you so much, Dr. Wick, for, sure. for attending. We'll see you. In a couple of weeks. Yes. Well, I'll see you tonight, but see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you. All righty. Let's move on to the next item on the agenda. Um, we have our Senate officer elections. Before we begin the process, I just want to go over the responsibilities that are stated in the bylaws. The Secretary of the Senate shall be charged with keeping records of the student Senate, shall be charged with calling attendance at each meeting, assisting the Speaker in counting votes and calling names for roll call, keeping accurate um, minutes of every meeting, to read minutes when presented in the Senate, um, and of course, receiving key tract of minutes and or reports sent by the executive branch or committee secretaries to perform any other duties as assigned by the bylaws or action of the student the Senate. Secretary shall be charged with um, presenting a verbal general report of the student Senate and summer Senate meetings to the student body virtually and be broadcasted via um, SGA media platform. So again, um, we do have a vacancy in our in our leadership for our officers. Um, I'm also going to share my screen and go over the um, the procedure that uh, y'all have voted on, just to make sure there's no confusion. Uh, I believe we'll have a period of nomination. Once that period has closed, um, senators that are running for secretary will present a little speech on why they're qualified. Um, and then it will open after every um, senator has finished. Um, there's going to be a period of questioning for nominees. Um, and then, of course, if you have multiple nominees, more than two, uh, the top two. Um, candidates will be um, in the runoff, and then until we have a majority, that person will be elected. So, any conf any questions regarding the procedure, Senator uh, McDowell? Yeah. So, just to clarify, senators have a two-minute speech. If you'd like a thirty-minute silent or verbal warning, just let me know. Um, yeah. All righty. The floor is open for any motions or any nominations. Senator Johnson. I nominate Senator McAdams for the secretary position. Is there a second? Senator Cowell seconds. Senator McAdams, you accept this nomination? I accept. Any other nominations? Senator Johnson. I nominate Senator Brown for secretary. Is there a second? Second. Senator Brown, do you accept this nomination? I do. Any other nominations? Senator Schulte. I nominate myself for this position. Senator Johnson seconds. Awesome. Any other <laughs> nominations? All righty. So there's no any more nominations. If the three senators can come up front. Um, we'll start out with Senator McAdams, then Brown, and lastly, Senator Schulte. I believe you have two minutes to present your little spiel. Um, once you start beginning, um, your time will begin. If you can do that, get all three senators up the front. That'd be awesome. All right, Senator McAdams, you have the the floor. Once you start talking, we'll, we'll, Andy will be in charge of it. You're so kind. Let me restart my timer. Okay. 
Hi, I'm Meg. Um, the first thing I want to address is having to leave the Senate meetings at 7 p.m. for the last month or so. Um, I had meetings I had to attend, but as of about three weeks ago, I am no longer required to attend them. Therefore, I'm here to stay for the entire meeting um, from three weeks ago on, just to address that. Um, so I ran for secretary at the beginning of this semester, and during that, I spoke my, about my qualifications and experiences. So I'm not going to talk about that again. Um, this time, I want to speak more about why I want to be an officer in general. So my goals can be categorized into two different categories for the Senate and for the student body. Firstly, the Senate, I feel like we have lost sight of our greater goal of helping and advocating for students. We are meant to be their voice, but after recent events, it feels like we're not focusing on that. And as an officer, I want to help us realize this goal again and what it means to be a senator. I want to ensure that every single senator feels included, valued, and a part of the Senate. And I'm still navigating the Senate and how it works, but as an officer, I want to help everyone else navigate this as well. Secondly, the student body. Transparency is important, making sure that the student body has easy access to know what we're doing and who we are. But also, I've realized that a large portion of the student body either doesn't know that we exist, doesn't know what we do, doesn't know what kind of issues they can bring to the Senate, or doesn't care. Um, so another one of my goals is to help us reach a larger audience. Tabling is great. It gives us a chance to be there visibly in front of students and tell them who we are, but how do we reach those who we haven't reached yet? Um, I love the idea of the short video updates after each meeting, which of course I would continue. Um, but I also want to speak with Matthew about other possibilities for communications to students. So thank you guys for listening and please let me know if you have any questions. All right. Senator Brown, um, you have the floor. So unlike my competition, I do not have a speech prepared. Um, however, I am very well at time management. Um, I understand that we don't have time to read a huge list of minutes. Um, so for the minutes that I've been taking, it's all about who made what motions and who seconded. Um, I also understand the time commitment that is required of the officers for our Senate. Um, I understand that and I have a lot of time dedicated to the Senate um, and time that I can set aside for those officer duties. I am in the SGA office often, um, as many of you have seen. Um, so I am always talking to the executive officers and I feel like that is a branch, uh, a branch that we do not have uh, a bridge between the executive branch and the Senate itself. Um, and I'm hoping to help bridge that gap. I also feel like my um, compatriot here that we need to reach out to the student body more often. Um, I know that they most of the time the questions I get asked when I'm tabling is what is SGA? Um, people don't even know what we are, much less that we exist. Um, and so part of my platform is I will be moving to uh, uh, elected or not moving to reduce office hours and bring it to either tabling twice a week or office hours instead. Thank you. All right, thank you, Senator Brown. And last, we have uh, Senator Schulte. You have the floor. Okay, hi, my name is Gracie. Um, sorry, let me start my timer, my bad. Um, for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm a junior here at UNT and I'm a chemistry major. Um, currently, SGA is the only organization that I'm involved in. Um, that's just kind of how it worked with my schedule this semester, unfortunately. Um, but that being said, um, I'm willing to uh, spend as much time as I can or as I need um, to be in this secretary position. Um, I've already attended um, all the pretty previous meetings for the full amount of time, and then I plan to do the exact same thing. Um, it's just a prior commitment that I've already made as being a senator. Um, I'm not worried at all about taking notes or keeping time. That's already something that I do like in my little notebook, and so I, I would just kind of be doing the same thing. Um, I feel like I can work well with the other officers and exec staff if that needs to happen, and I'm, I feel like I already have a good relationship with the Senate, so I mean, yeah, I feel like that, you know, I feel like I'm qualified for this position. So if y'all have any questions, just let me know. 
All right. Thank you, Senator Schulte. I believe now the 10, uh, we're now into our, a period of questioning. There's 10 minutes. Um, remember that questions need to be specifically to a specific candidate. Um, and Senator Johnson, go ahead. This question is directed for Senator Brown. Um, so as a Senate officer, we are electing you to be a Senate officer in terms of being, we want you to be a leader of the Senate. With a lot of the time that you spend in the SG op, SG, SGA office, do you think that you could still be able to keep the Senate first above all else? Oh, of course. Um, I spend my time in the SGA office primarily because uh, we as senators don't have an office or a location. Um, I primarily do my work and schoolwork there because my work is remote. Um, and I find that doing it in an office style environment is more beneficial. Um, and this is why I do it in the SGA office because that's, you know, the only location that we as senators have to go towards. Um, so I go in there, I find an unused seat, I sit down and I just do my work. Um, being in the SGA office just gives me a unique opportunity to listen to and talk to the other executive members about um, the things that they're doing and what's going on in there as well. Any other questions? Senator Cowell, go ahead. Um, my question my question is also for you. Um, if it were the will of the Senate, would you be willing to um, write more detailed minutes besides of course. this motion? Okay. Of course. Um, I just know that time is one of our major concerns, and that's why that is uh, one of the things I'd mentioned. Um, would someone like to recognize JT to speak? Senator Johnson recognizes JT to speak. Senator Shiloh, second. All righty. JT, you have the, the floor. Okay, can you hear me? Um, my question to all of you, um, I think all of you pretty much touched on it about as far as the communication. Hey, JT, uh, it's just specifically to one candidate. Uh, do you have one? I mean, you can ask it to a person in particular. Um, but it's for just one candidate. Okay, I believe it was the, I'm gonna go with the first person that spoke, I'm sorry, Senator. Um, but you talked about the lack of people and about SGA. Secretary, I was curious, I saw the videos that y'all do after the Senate meetings, which I don't think we've had one in a while. What are you gonna do to get more students knowledgeable about SGA? Do you have anything solid? I mean, it, I, I would want to speak with Matthew first um, to hear what he would like to do, because I don't want to say that I'd like to do something that he's already planning to do or, um, you know, step over him in that. Um, so my the first thing that I would do is speak to him, talk to him about my concerns and um, then to the Senate about their concerns and gather ideas from first Matthew, then the Senate. See what we can do from there, but definitely continuing the videos. Um, I feel like that's a really productive and fast way for um, students to get access to what we've talked about and what we're doing. Um, but seeing how we can get those videos out to more than just those on our Instagram is a priority. Any other questions, Senator Dow? Dow, sorry. This one's for Senator Brown. So Senator Brown, you you mentioned. Uh, one of your priorities would be tabling twice a week. Did you mean twice a month? Yes, sorry. Um, tabling twice a month instead of having to do office hours every week uh, would be my goal. Senator Johnson. This is for Senator, and I'm so sorry for but your last name. Schultze? Schultze. Schultze, thank you, thank you. So in your speech uh, or little presentation that you said, that you, this is the only organization that you are involved in, and we are electing you to a leadership position. Do you have any other experience of a holding a leadership position? Yes, I do. Uh, if you want to know about my high school leadership positions, I can tell you. Okay, I mean, I was captain of the track and cross country team for three years, um, competed at the regional level in both sports. So I was representing my, um, I guess, team and community um, at that level. Um, I was president of National Honor Society as well as just a member. Um, I was secretary <laughs> uh, for my junior class. Um, I mean, I'm trying to think. I was, what was, um, 
I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't think y'all would really want to know about all that stuff because it's kind of in the past. But um, I'm trying to think. Oh, Lord. Uh, if it makes you feel better, you answered my question. OK, awesome. <laughs> I mean, volunteer. I You've mean, had leadership experience okay, before. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Senator Banerjee. My question is for Senator McAdams. How would you plan to close or address the perceived gap between exec and Senate, let's say, and to make all senators feel included? Um, well, my first priority would be in terms of that to meet with the exec um, and talk to them on a one on one basis um, to express that concern, hear from them on um, you know, what they've been up to, um, talk to them on how they believe that they can connect with the Senate more. Um, cause while it is a gap between exec as a whole and the Senate, it's also a gap between each individual exec in the Senate. So I'd want to speak with each of them, um, and see what we could do to bridge it with each of them individually, if that makes sense. Um, but also trying to see if we can, you know, like have some more interaction between the Senate and the exec, because I know we're pretty limited in terms of that during um, at least if, if you don't go to their office super often, then um, besides exec reports, we don't really talk to them. Um, so expanding that a bit. Any other questions? Anyone in the audience as well, you're welcome to. Um, can someone recognize our Alexis co-director of Diversity and inclusion. Senator Johnson recognizes a uh, co-director of Be diversity and inclusion. Just make sure you're raising your hand to get recognized. Oh, sorry. Uh, but I'm going to allow it. Is there a second? McDowell seconds. All right. Alexis, you have the floor. So this is for Senator, I believe, Brown. Yes. Um, so I know JC wanted to ask to everybody, but I'm going to ask straight to you. Um, what were you going to do to, I guess, bridge the gap between exec? Was that his question? Bridge the gap between exec and um and Senate. So what would you like to do? Do you have any ideas that you might have? So um, a small example of my uh, work in progress for this already is being part of the um, initiative to ask executives what they wanted to do about the exec reports. Um, because, you know, the Senate feel one way and the execs feel another way, and this is a, a gap to begin bridging as well. Um, beyond that, like um, Senator McAdams suggested, um, I want to create some kind of involvement between um, not just professionally, but socially as well. Um, you know, and this is something that would have to be discussed moving forward. Um, but one idea I have is perhaps a costume contest for the end of the month for Halloween. Any other questions? Rose, go ahead. Hi, my question is for Senator Schulte. What would be your biggest priority as Secretary of the Senate? Well, at this point in the semester, I feel like my biggest priority is just being able to stay like as long as I can. Um, no hate to Maria Velasco. I think she's in the room right now. But I mean, we kind of need a long term, you know, person in this position, which I understand. Um, I plan to be in SGA again, like to continue my term, I guess, next semester. Um, I haven't currently thought about any like big time projects. Um, I mean, I really just thought a lot this past week like do I even want to be secretary do I see myself fit for this position so I'll be honest I don't have any like master plans or anything in a notebook somewhere but I mean I'm more than willing to work with anyone or have email conversations zoom if they see something that needs to be done like I mean we can figure it out all righty that concludes our period of questioning thank you all three for nominating or being nominated. Awesome. All right, so I created a.
a Google form or Microsoft form, uh, I am going to put this in the in the Teams. Hopefully, everyone now by this point has access to the Teams. Uh, Awesome has been posted. Let me know if you have any issues. Um, senators accessing it. Of course, during this time, I wanted to say thank you. Um, for the three senators, Senator McAdams, Senator Brown and Senator Schulte for. Um, taking initiative and um, filling that vacancy. All right, so far we only have six responses. Point of order, um, there's a button to submit another submission. I hit submit and then it let me submit another submission. Give me one second. Uh, I can't access the form. So do I just stay, I guess? Um, is you can't access on Teams, Isabella? No, because I'm on my way from work. Okay. And it, I can't. Really um, if not, if you'd like to state your vote for the record, or after we have enough responses of the senators present in the chamber, we can we can let you know when you can do a voice vote, a voice vote for that. Okay, that works. Hey, Isabella, um, what's your vote? Sorry, Senator Schulte. OK, um, Schulte, you have one vote in your favor, I believe. There is anonymous votes. OK. Those votes will not count. So, so if you do not see your name on the screen, um, please state your votes. Have Alejandro, Gracie, Beige. Grant. Okay. Senator Banerjee. Okay. Who voted who? All right. All right, we're going to do division. So we're going to vote by roll call. <laughs> All righty. Just to make this easier. Um, if, can you take awesome? I got you. Yeah. All right, we're going to do roll call vote just, just to alleviate anything. So 
Senator Shiloh, um, you can just state your vote. McAdams. McAdams. All right, Senator Brown. Brown. Senator McAdams. McAdams. Awesome. Senator McDowell. Brown. Senator Lee. Schulte. Senator Banerjee. That's for Brown. Senator Castellanos. Schulte. Senator Guevara. McAdams. All right. Senator um, Johnson. McAdams. Senator Mosley. McAdams. Senator Sanchez Martinez. That's Schulte. Um, Senator Tovar, that was Schulte again, um, as previously stated earlier. Senator Van Voris. McAdams. Senator M. Senator Brown. Senator, that's for Senator Brown. Um, Senator Cowell. McAdams. Senator Schulte. Senator Schulte. For Schulte. And then um, Batoro's not present. All righty, um, just for the record, Senator Schulte obtained five votes. Senator McAdams obtained seven votes. Senator Brown takes four votes. Um, then round two will have Senator Schulte and McAdams. Um, we're going to do another roll call. Um, again, you make your two decisions, Senator Schulte or Senator um, McAdams. Senator Shiloh, we start McAdam. off with you. Mc McAdams. McAdams. Senator Brown, that's for Schulte. Senator McAdams. McAdams. Senator McDowell. Schulte. Senator Lee. Schulte. Senator Banerjee. McAdams. Senator. Castellanos, that's for Schulte. Senator Guevara. McAdams. Okay, Senator Johnson. McAdams. Senator Mosley. Schulte. Senator Chantes Martinez. Schulte. Um, Senator Tovar. Schulte. Senator Van Voris. McAdams. Senator M. Schulte. Schulte. Senator Cowell. McAdams. McAdams. Senator Schulte. Schulte. And. All right. Um, Senator Schulte, you are now our new secretary for the Senate with nine votes. Senator McAdams, um, you obtained seven votes. So at this time, if you would like to come up the front um, and join the rest of the officers, that'd be amazing. All right, let's continue with our next item on the business, on the agenda, executive reports. Senator Brown. Senator Brown moves to skip executive reports due to time constraints. Is there a second? McDowell Senator seconds. Is there any objections? Senator Mosley ejects. All right, let's do a vote by a show of hands. If you'd like to skip executive reports, please raise your hand. Anyone that opposes? All right, we're um, we're now having executive reports for this meeting. All righty, let me. Okay. So approval of minutes. Let me share my screen. Were there any um, corrections that need to be made for minutes or voting records? If there's no corrections, both voting records and minutes are passed unanimously. All right, next item on the agenda. We have a piece of legislation under emergency status, F-2021 R3, membership in the Texas Student Government Coalition. It was introduced by President Skinner. Um, since he's not present, I will continue. Um, 
with that. Hopefully everyone can see. All right, I'm going to start reading. Unless someone else have a motion, Senator M. I motion to um, have the document as move. I move to have the motion as read. Is there a second? The motion was to move as the motion as read. So essentially that would mean it will be considered as read. Is there a second? Senator Mosley seconds. All right. Does anyone object? I object. All right. Vote of show of hands. Um, if you want to consider this as read so we don't have to read it, raise your hand. Is there um, anyone that nays? All right, it is considered as read. Um, the, the floor is open for any motions. Senator Johnson. I move to go to a period of questioning. Is there a second? Second. Um, okay. Your your first question. So since Devin is not here to talk about this and we assume that it's been read, this is what he talked about earlier. So do you have enough until the relay our questions to you or maybe Casey, the best person to talk about? This? Casey's maybe. not present, okay. so we'll do the best ability to answer <laughs> okay. your questions. Go ahead. Does this, inv so our person who will be putting towards this Texas Student Government Coalition would be Devin would be our person we send, correct? That is correct. I believe that was requirements from mm -hmm. the, um, Texas A&M um, that they would want. Well, first um, for the legislative branch for the Senate to allow for us to have a seat at the table. But yes, the representative for the for you and for UNT would be Devin. Um, and there is no cost to uh, no additional cost for joining this or is there any type of cost for joining this? I believe uh, financial wise. Um, it says here. Devin, you have you have the floor. This is your bill. I didn't know you were. So, yeah, so. Uh, there is a $50 charge to join and that's just kind of like a membership dues situation. Um, but there wouldn't there there according if this legislation passes, we would not be authorized to spend any more than the due charge in order to join. Now you will see a section in that legislation that recommends a reconsideration to join the coalition on a permanent basis through a bylaws amendment. Um, I would recommend keeping those charges in consideration for future consideration of this of, of making this a permanent situation. But this legislation is only for this year. And if the Senate so decides, this would only be a $150 charge. As a, as, I, I don't know if I'm making sense. Did that answer your question, Grant? It does. What I'm trying to say is, does that $50 charge, is that per semester or just for the year? That's just for the year. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Point of information, I don't know, maybe Krista would be the best person to answer this, but my understanding is that legislation like this can't last longer than a semester. Is that true or false? Um, does someone want to recognize Krista to speak? I, I move to recognize Krista. Senator Brown seconds. Uh, Krista, let me get your microphone. Good question. Let me think about it a little bit. Uh, back to me. Let me. Yeah, let me ponder for a moment. All right. Senator um, McDowell. Yeah. So I was wondering. We haven't gotten a whole lot of information on this. Are there bylaws? Is there a constitution? What does joining entail? What powers would this president have as a member of this body? What What is What is all that? Excellent question. Um, there's going to be a call conference in which the membership of the TSGC would participate in kind of establishing more of that structure. Um, if, uh, yeah, so there's currently a structure. You, there are certain tiers that member, member organizations 
Ken Rich, depending on how much legislation they introduce and all that kind of stuff. Um, and the THC is very limited in what it can control at its member or at a member location. So really, you can't tell a member organization what to do, but it can be an opportunity for those member organizations to represent a broader interest. Um, you can kind of think of it like the UN. The UN, the UN can't really tell a country what they can and can't do. They, you know, they have censures and recommendations and all that. Uh, but as a UN, they're able to represent. Hey, Devin. Now, uh, you're glitching. That we would what? Devin, you're glitching. Can you repeat that? <laughs> Sorry, the connection is probably bad. Yeah, I'm on the road. Can you hear me? Yes, you were talking about it's similar like the UN. You can't make really decisions. Um, they're just kind of a collective body. Yeah. So it's not it's not retroactive. They can't direct a member organization to do something, but they can represent member organizations on a broader scale. Um, and so that's that's kind of that I think that's an important point to make here. Um, there are certainly things that need to be ironed out with the structure, but Texas A and M did not want to do that on behalf of member organizations, and so that's what this small conference would entail. Um, but in order to determine its own, like the certain the certain elements of its own structure, you know, you need to be a part of the organization to do that, and so that's what this legislation is doing. Also. Um, we can pull out of the TSGC at any point with additional legislation. Uh, and that's something else we could find as well. Follow up question, Mr. Speaker. Go ahead. So it, it, you might have cut out at the beginning. You might have said it already. But just to clarify, there are no bylaws or there's no constitution or anything like that for this organization. My understanding is there's not a current one because the uh, Texas A&M wants the membership of the TSGC to establish that themselves. They don't want it to be a unilateral position. All righty. Krista, would someone like to recognize Krista to speak? Mr. Speaker? Yes. I move to recognize Krista. Is there a second? Senator Cowell seconds. All right. Awesome. All right, I thought about it, and this is what I think, although I know this is going to come back to bite me later on uh, without having more time to kind of think through examples. To me, I think a piece of legislation that commits an administration term would be okay. Like you can't commit future senates or future administrations to something, but this is would stay within the year. So I don't personally see an issue with that or know of any precedents that would prevent that. So, I mean, y'all, uh, I believe you approved the budget for the entire school year, which this would be kind of along the same lines. Like it's, it's still within the same tenure of the current administration. And I, I would say that's OK. Thank you. <laughs> All righty. Any other questions for for Devin? Any other motions? On the floor, Senator Cowell. Uh, Senator Cowell moves to a period of discussion. Is there a second? Senator Lee seconds. All right. We're now a period of discussion. Senator Cowell, you have the first discussion point. Um, I think this is a good idea for us to be connected with other universities. That's it. All right. Any other discussion points? Senator Mc, uh, McDowell. I think this I think this is an interesting opportunity. Um, I'm not really sure what it would entail. Um, I don't I don't think that Texas A&M or the organization really knows what it would entail. I think this is kind of an experimental thing. I'm here for the experiment. I'm interested to see where this goes, and I think we should approve this legislation. Um, just letting you know, we have I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, Devin. We've been part of um, this coalition in the past. I think it kind of um, died because of COVID, and I think we haven't renewed our membership. Um, but would someone like to recognize um, Casey to speak, Senator Banerjee? 
I move to recognize the seat. Is there a second? Senator Shiloh seconds. All right, Casey, you have the floor. Hello, everyone. I hope everyone's having a great evening. Um, sorry I wasn't here for the original portion of this. Um, when it comes to the Texas Student Government Coalition, um, as the SGA, we do and we take on the responsibility of advocating for the undergrad Hello. at UNT as well as within Denton. Um, but there is uh, a limited factor of how much we can do in the space of Texas. Um, TSGC has taken that on in the past as being an advocating force for that within universities to collaborate and have that opportunity. Um, so I definitely think it would be a good opportunity to jump in. Um, some people would say it's experimental, but it's also a great opportunity that's happened in the past. There's um, benefits to it to be able to collaborate with outside universities and student governments. So, Any other discussion points or motions? Senator Lee? I move to a period of voting. Senator Lee moves to a period of voting. Senator Johnson seconds. Is there any objections? All right, awesome. Um, Senator Schulte, um, I believe is now your first time to do roll call voting. Um, so how it works is you just call on Senator's name and Senators um, to vote again, just a reminder. Um, if you vote in the affirmative, you say A or I, sorry. You vote the negative, you say no. All right. Yeah, cool. Senator Shiloh? Aye. Senator Brown? Aye. Senator McAdams? Senator McDowell? Aye. Senator Lee? Aye. Senator Banerjee? Aye. Senator Castellanos? Aye. Uh, Senator Guevara? Aye. Uh, Senator Johnson? Aye. Senator Mosley? Aye. Senator Sanchez Martinez? Aye. Senator Tovar? Aye. Senator Van Boris? Aye. Senator M? Aye. Senator Cowell? Aye. Senator Schulte? Aye. Sen I believe um, it was a unanimous vote. And the, um, the F2021R3 passes. That was, they flipped this. Um, we have a Senate appointment. Um, Lauren, you come up to the front, please. All right, Lauren, before you begin, just want to, um, you have the floor once you start talking to give your little spiel on why you think you would be a great um, senator for the Honors College. Um, and then once you're done, the floor will be open for any motions, but Lauren, take, take it away. Okay. Hello. Hi, I'm Lauren. Um, you know, I had things to say and then I panicked about the microphone. Uh, so hi, I'm Lauren. Um, I'm here to hopefully become a, the senator for the Honors College. Um, I believe that I would be a good senator um, for the Honors College because the Honors College is in a unique position as in it covers a right away of students and majors throughout the school. Um, and I have a lot of experience um, interacting with the different colleges and stuff. A uh, little known fact, I'm a linguistics major now, but when I actually uh, started here, I was a biology major. And uh, so I have a lot of uh, experience interacting with like people from the various colleges. I'm actually doing a Spanish minor, and I'm also very involved in the choir here at UNT. 
And uh, yeah, I have um, some experience um, just doing like various leadership roles. When I was in high school, I was in um, like the NHS and I was not an officer per se, but some of the things that we did there was pretty similar to how SGA worked in terms of like building legislation and making movements. Uh, unfortunately, in my high school, anything that we did had to go through our, um, what's it called? Uh, the board of directors for the school and they didn't like change very much, but I'm hoping that here at SGA it'll be a bit different and that some of the things that I can bring to the table will actually help make a difference for the students here at the university. Um, Thank you so much, Lauren. The floor is open for any motions. Uh, Senator Johnson. I move that we go to a period of questioning. Senator and second. All right. It's been moved and seconded to be in a period of questioning. Senator Johnson, you have the first question. As uh, the representative for the Honors College, what is number one thing that you think you could improve or want to improve uh, for the Honors College to benefit the Honors College? Sorry. Um, hmm. Probably the number one thing is just like the students interacting with each other more. Like um, I lived in the Honors College dorm and that was nice. I made a lot of friends, but there weren't like a lot of like things for me to like meet other co Honors College students uh, outside of the people who lived in my dorm. And I know that's a bit different now since we're out of like COVID and stuff, but I think it's really hard to um, like still meet other honor college students just because we're kind of all scattered all over the place. And uh, I think it, we could benefit from maybe doing like a bit more. I know we have like the uh, the program council and stuff for the honors college specifically, but um, a lot of things just like aren't in person as they used to be. Thank you. Um, Senator Brown. Um, you mentioned a lot of the legislation you were writing in high school and trying to pass had to go through your board of directors um, and that they were very adverse to change. And so a lot of it didn't. Um, that can still happen. I'm here. sorry, Senator Brown. Senators, let's make sure that we're not having side conversations when the speaker is speaking. Thank you. Continue, Senator Brown. Um, even here in our Senate, that can happen a lot because we are, as elected officials, um, not a we can run into a lot of roadblocks with other departments. Um, what uh, kind of actions will you take to get around these roadblocks? Um, I feel like I will be able to like work more with uh, the people here in the Senate. I do know a lot of you. I know a lot of you have seen me at the meetings. I kind of know how they work. I've already been like um, asked by like a couple students as I was running my campaign, like what I was, what I was doing. Um, and even some people came to me about like some concerns that they already had. And I think being able to work with more people, this is a bigger uh, like presiding body than like the NHS was in my high school. And I think the university is a lot more open to change than my high school used to be. And I think as long as like we have enough like support from the students, then like whatever we try to get through, we'll hopefully go through. Okay, thank you. Um, there is a speaker in the back that I'd like to get recognized. Would someone like to recognize um, Senator McDowell? I, I move to recognize the speaker back there. Senator, Senator Brown seconds. All right, you have the floor. Okay. Go ahead. Um, as a as a member of the um, Honors College as well, um, I'm a sophomore here at UNT. Um, I was just wondering what you were um, thinking of doing as far as uniting um, different different um, people in the Honors College because I grew, um, I was at uh, Victory Hall because I'm an athlete here. So um, I wasn't very, um, I wasn't really around a lot of other honors kids. And that might have been due to COVID, as you mentioned. So I was just wondering what you were going to do to like help remedy that. Um, I was thinking about maybe working with the Honors College to institute something like a social where um, you can go and like meet new people and talk about your majors and what you're interested in, as well as um, maybe like bring snacks and or even like movie nights, something like that. Something that like we can just get together and talk to people. It's been a while since we've been able to do to do that. I don't know about you, but I kind of miss seeing movies. Any other questions, Senator Gal? Um, I have two quick questions. The first one, um, can you just remind everyone what your pronouns are? Oh yeah, so I use they, them pronouns. I would prefer that you use them with me. Okay, thank you. 
Um, and uh, my next question is uh, a little longer, but um, what would you do to support constituents who are members of minority groups, such as the queer community, people of color, disabled students, or financially unstable individuals? Um, I would probably just, first off, just being able to be here and like feel comfortable stating my pronouns and how I feel about myself is already like a big step. It's going to be, I always use it with my professors and um, it'll be on the website. Uh, I don't remember where I was going with this. Uh, <laughs> I think just visibility is a big thing. I mean, JD here, uh, as far as the, I know, the only other one who uses they, them pronouns in the Senate. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Hi, Paige. Sorry. Uh, so I think just bringing more awareness to like these things that like the people here who are, you know, fin I am relatively financially unstable. Um, I'm here completely on scholarships, grants, and loans. Um, so I kind of understand where it's like coming from, just being able to be visible about it and like see people like, oh, hey, there's someone here on the Senate like me who knows what I'm dealing with. I can come to them and um, talk to them about my problems and they'll understand just more visibility. Thank you so much. Any other questions? Senator Mosley? How are you doing? Welcome. <laughs> um, and correct me if I'm wrong. Never mind. Don't correct me if I'm wrong. Me. <laughs> <laughs> you can. So here's my question. Um, so many individuals sometimes think that the honors college is, I mean, it's true. The honors college is different from regular college. I don't want to say regular college, but like generic colleges. Um, how would you describe the honors college versus other colleges? Or how would you bridge the gap if there is a gap? There is a gap. So how would you bridge the gap with that? I know there's two questions. I'm sorry, but. Yeah. <laughs> um, bridging the gap would kind of be like uh, bringing more awareness to like what the Honors College is and what's it about. A lot of people think that it's it's only for like super smart people and like the people uh, like, you know, plays through classes and stuff like that. But that's not true. When I was applying for the Honors College, my GPA actually wasn't where it needed to be at the time. And like the and um admissions office uh actually like worked with me and was like hey so we know that your gpa or i was i emailed them and i was like hey uh so my gpa is not where it should be but i still want to apply anyway it's just kind of letting people know that like it's not just for like super smart people like you do have requirements that you have to meet in order to apply but they're like nice enough to work with you and um you know work with your goals just to make sure that if this is something that you want to do, that you can do it. Any other uh, question or motions? Senator Sanchez Martinez. Hi. Um, I just wanted to say um, you're doing really good. Uh, you did a really good job answering all the questions. Um, I just wanted to reassure you with uh, for that. You seem very confident. Um, so yeah, hi. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Senator Cowell. Um, Senator Cowell moves to a period of closed discussion. Senator Johnson seconds. All right, does anyone object? All right, at this time, we're in a period of closed discussion. Lauren, if you would like to take your stuff um, with you and um, you can hang out near the syndicate and Senator Banerjee will um, come get you whenever the Senate has done deliberating. All righty, uh, we'll wait. Um, I don't know if y'all returners or people that have been in the SGA, Jeopardy music playing in my head right now. Yeah, we used to play music. Um, copyright rules. Yeah, with music being copyright, I know, sad face. Um, YouTube will bl block it. Yeah, but all right, guys. Remember, can't talk, do not recognize. All right, we're now in a period of closed discussion. Can someone remind me um, who was the person that made the motion? Senator Cowell? 
All right, Senator Cowell, you have the first discussion point. Um, yeah, I think that they're a good candidate. Um, like uh, somebody said earlier. Uh, anyway, they answered the questions really well. Um, they gave very concise answers, and I think it was nice to hear that they had like a plan about, you know, bringing awareness about the Honors College. They clearly have a lot of experience. So, um, yeah. Senator Johnson. My uh, sister is in the Honors College, and I've told her about the impact SGA has had to me and what the voice we give to our constituents. And I think it's that candidate they are an ideal person I would want to represent my sister, so. All right, Senator M. I would just like to clarify that um, me and Senator um, Lee have actually um, signed off on their signature when they were going through get talking signatures, and that was due to us being friends with them and not knowing that we're actually, uh, it's like a conflict of interest for us to do that. So we will be abstaining from their vote, but uh, we would like to say that we, um, uh, we support the can candidates. Yeah, just to follow up, me and Luke are personal friends of Lauren. We met them through the Honors College in our dorm. So abstain, per, uh, conflict of interest. Well, thank but you all not, for- not because I don't like them. Well, thank you for sharing. Um, and of course, you can vote however you want, but thank you for, for being transparent with us about that. Senator Banerjee. Yeah, I would just like to say I think that their perspective is one that we definitely need in this Senate. Um, I would encourage us if we don't have any other discussion points. And I'll, I also just wanted to say I think their point about applying with a GPA lower than the required was a uh, very like candid, but not even necessarily asked for one but one that they seem to have offered just to offer perspective to us and insight and i think that's the kind of uh, i think community oriented leadership that we need senator van Voris, um go ahead hey guys um i would like to move to a period of voting i think as a reminder it's important to um Think about how many senators we have left. Um, we have unfortunately lost a lot of our members um, in the past month. And I think when we have a good candidate available to us, there's no other reason to discuss the qualifications, um, which is why I'd like to move to this, this motion. Is there a second? Senator Lee seconds. Anyone object? All right, no. Should we do by raise of hands? Never mind. Okay. Um, sorry. Roll call. Um, all right. Um, point of information. Yes. Does an ab absence abstain cause uh, is counted as a no, correct? It is counted as a vote not in for nor in favor. Um, we need a two thirds uh, majority for Lauren to be. Um, approved to be or to be appointed in the Senate. Sure, go ahead. So a lot of the times when we say majority, we actually mean a positive majority. So to vote positive, you have to vote yes or aye. And abstain is a neutral vote, so that doesn't count towards a positive count. So in essence, it would be an it would not be a vote for. So it doesn't count towards the two thirds required. Point of information, what is two thirds of what we have right now? That is 10 individuals, assuming we have 15 people present. I believe we have two senators not present. We have two senators via teams. Um, let's Senator Schulte, if you can start roll call, please. Senator Shiloh. Aye. Senator Brown. Aye. Senator McDowell. Aye. Senator Lee. Abstain. Senator Banerjee. Aye. 
Senator Castellanos? Aye. Senator Guevara? Aye. Senator Johnson? Aye. Senator Mosley? Aye. Aye. Senator Sanchez Martinez? Aye. Senator Tovar? Aye. Senator Von Boris? Aye. Senator M? Abstain. Senator Cowell? Aye. Senator Schulte? Aye. I believe there's two abstentions. So um, Lauren is now the new senator for the Honors College. <laughs> senator Banerjee, if you can inform um, newly appointed Senator um, Allen that she's now a member of the Senate. We'll move on to the next item on the agenda. Um, we have F2021 R4 um, submitted by Senator Grant Johnson. Uh, sorry. Was there anyone to get recognized? No. OK. Um, Senator Johnson, you have you have the floor. Testing. You know, okay, I guess it is working. So I'm just going to go ahead and read this. It's very brief. Whereas all University of North Texas student computers are to be used for at the discretion of the university student for the purpose of UNT related activities or the other non related activities. Whereas with an abundance of numerous shortcuts on UNT computers per pertaining everything from logging off a computer shortcut to thinking a teacher shortcut. There is no other shortcut, I mean, I use shortcut a lot, that allows the UNT student to have quick access to move everyday use of web type program the university makes students use, i.e. Canvas. Let it be resolved. Sorry, my mask. All UNT computers have an immediate or near fu uh, future shortcut that takes students directly to the UNT Canvas homepage and that this shortcut be on all UNT public slash lab computers. I do know, I do not know if lab needed to be capitalized or not, so let's put that out there. So I talked to the, I always forget her name, the head IT lady who's in charge of all in type of technology here on campus. And this is something that is in the works that uh, this would hopefully speed up the process. So the idea behind this is I've had a couple of constituents to me as well as personal belief behind this. I don't know how many of y'all use UNT computers here on campus, but when you log on, there's like I boom, 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 pop ups everywhere and it kind of drives me crazy when I'm just trying to log on to Canvas. There is no UNT Canvas shortcut. You have to immediately go log in, search the, close all the tabs, go into Canvas and type in UNT Canvas into your log information. This would hopefully bring that shortcut automatically on there. When I talk about thinking a teacher shortcut, that's a shortcut on there for t to go take you directly to there. So my hopes is that since UNT students heavily, heavily, heavily rely on Canvas, that this would helpfully give a little bit less time or more time for the student to work on their individual projects, homework, discussions, whatever. So yeah, that's that. Um, before we move on, can we just give a round of applause to our new Senator um, Allen? Welcome to the Senate. So before we continue, you now have full rights. You get to ask any questions. You can you, now you get to start voting on pieces of legislation. I don't think we have anything to consider for the rest of um, meaning of the, of the business. But um, again, welcome and we're excited to have you. All righty. Um, now, Senator uh, Brown, any motions? Senator Brown moves to a period of voting. Senator Mosley seconds. That's out of order. So. Um, this is not under emergency status. So the only thing we can do is uh, go into a period of questioning if y'all would like to. Um, y'all will have to vote on this next week. So, uh, 
Any other motions? Senator Mosley? Senator Mosley moves to the um, period of questioning. There a second? McDowell seconds. All right, we're now in period of was moved and seconded to go to a period of questioning. Senator Mosley, you have the first um, question. All righty. This is a um, well-written piece. What would be the process of making this change? Will the university have to take all the computers back and install them one by one? Or would there be a system shutdown for the day so this can happen? Or like, what would be the process for this to happen? Like, what would be like the... Um, the process for this to happen, basically. So from my understanding, what I gathered from uh, some emails that we passed through each other, this is already in discussion. There is no reason why they would have to. This is for UNT computers, so labs, what they issue out. This gives a simple like 30 second kind of thing to where and not really 30 second, but where relatively brief. UNT computer labs sometimes usually over breaks that the staff still works here and they do update software updates. So this would be technically kind of like a software update. So whenever we come back or whenever the university uh, chooses to activate this uh, initiative that they are already in the works of discussing, my hopes would be since this would be uh, hopefully passed by the Senate that I can then go back and talk about the faster pace of getting this updated. I do not know what the timeline would be on this. When we submit, when a senator uh, submits a resolution, anything like this, it automatically just goes to, it just says, this is what the student body wants. It doesn't automatically go into effect. So with this, I would have to go back and carry it out. But from what I, conversations I've gathered with them, they are more than willing to go ahead and do this initiative because it's already being discussed. But I would hopefully, hopefully move that very, move that along in a more quicker pace. Would someone like to recognize Casey to speak? Senator Banerjee or? Yeah. To recognize Casey to speak. Later and second. All right, Casey, um, you have the floor. Awesome, I promise this is my last discussion point of the day. But uh, traditionally with resolutions it's sent to people, um, I was wondering if you planned on adding um, any individuals from the university to send this resolution to, um, maybe someone like Adam Fien, the DSI um, VP, or um, Abraham John Abraham, the DSI IT um, Executive Director. Oh, for sure. I'm just. This was just to put out because they knew we're talking about this, and I said this is literally what we allocated. I always forget her name, and I'm so sorry I did not have her name memorized for this. But she's like, yes, these are already in the works again. So I don't mind putting everybody's name on this who all related parties to that. No. You have a second question or no? Okay. Any other questions, Senator Cowell? Uh, Senator Cowell moves to the next item on the agenda. Is there a second? Senator Brown seconds. Does anyone object? All right, no. All right, let's go to the next item on the agenda. Thank you all. All right, now we have F2021 R5, the Paulina um, Diaz resolution submitted by Senator Cal, Senator McDowell. Um, we do have the state of the student body tonight, so I move to adjourn at 720. Is there a second? Senator Shiloh, second. Does anyone object? No objections, the motion passes. Um, the Senate meeting will adjourn at 720. Alrighty. Um, Senator Cowell, you can proceed. Okay, I'm gonna get through this quickly. It's a, it's a longer document. Um, whereas the University of North Texas policy states, discrimination and harassment are violations of this policy and will not be tolerated. The University of North Texas prohibits discrimination and harassment against any student, employee, or applicant because of race, color, national origin, religion, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, age, disability, genetic information, veteran status, or any other characteristic protected under applicable federal or state law in its application and admission process, educational programs, activities, uh, employment policies, procedures, processes, and university facilities. Um, whereas the University of North Texas policy states UNT does not discriminate on the basis of disability in, in, in admission, treatment, or access to its programs or activities, nor in employment in its programs or activities, the university is committed to providing equal educational access for qualified students with disabilities in accordance with state and federal laws, including the Americans for Disability Acts, 
excuse me, Americans with Disability Acts of 1990 as amended and Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973. And just the university is committed to making all programs and activities sponsored by UNT accessible as required by the Texas Accessibility Standards and the Americans with Disabilities Act uh, accessibility guidelines. To this end, all academic units are willing to make reasonable and appropriate adjustments to classroom environment, teaching, testing, or learning methodologies in order to facilitate equality of educational access for persons with disabilities. The Americans with Disability Acts of 1990, or the ADA, prohibits discrimination and ensures equal opportunity for persons with disabilities in employment, state and local government services, public accommodations, commercial facilities, and transportation. Title II of the Act requires that all state and local governments give people with disabilities equal opportunity to benefit from all programs, services, and activities including public education, employment, transportation, recreation, health care, social services, town meetings, etc. They are required to be able to communicate efficiently with people who have hearing, vision, or speech disabilities. Whereas the Braille Authority of North America states in the Braille signage guidelines of, guidelines of April 2014 that Braille should be positioned below the corresponding text. If text is multi-lined, Braille shall be placed below the entire text, Braille shall be separated three-eighths of an inch minimum from any other tactile characters and three-eighths of an inch minimum from raised borders and decorative elements. Whereas several buildings on UNT's campus contain Braille that is either missing or in the incorrect place to the side on their room plaques, this includes, but it's not limited to, the Music Building, the Music Annex, Bain Hall, Crumley Hall, the Eagle Student Services, Willis Library, Hurley Admin Building, Language Building, and others. Whereas College of Music student Paulina Diaz, who is blind, has found it needlessly difficult to navigate certain buildings, including the music building and the music annex, which she is in daily due to the incorrect braille placement, let it be resolved that the UNT Facilities Department perform an audit of all UNT buildings and facilities and the status of the braille present on all signage. Let it be further resolved all current UNT buildings bearing room plaques with incorrect braille, braille or lack thereof be replaced with new plaques containing the correct braille. This includes, but is not limited to, classrooms, bathrooms, offices, performance spaces, etc. Let it be further resolved. All future UNT buildings be fitted with room plaques containing correct braille and the correct placement according to ADA and Braille Authority of North America guidelines. Respectfully submitted, Senator Beige Cowell of the College of Music, if you could scroll down to Appendix B really quick. Um, we're skipping past Appendix A, that's just the Braille signage guidelines for reference. Um, and then Appendix B is an example of an incorrect Braille sign. It's down at the very, very bottom. It's the last page. Yes. Um, so this is in the music building room 1003. And it's kind of hard to see, but the Braille over there is on this side and is directly up against the border. Um, so this is, first of all, not underneath the text it corresponds to. And second of all, too close to other tactile borders and elements of the sign, um, which is in clear violation with all guidelines. Okay, so I will be presiding over the meeting for the <laughs> remainder of the meeting. Um, and thank you, Senator Cowell. Um, are there any motions on the floor? Senator Johnson, go ahead. I move that we go to a period of questioning. Okay, anyone seconds? Uh, Senator, Senator Givada seconds. Okay, any objections? Okay, we're in a period of questioning. And Senator Johnson, you have the first question. So obviously you did your homework on this. I mean, well done on that. My question is, what is your step? We pass, we pass this next meeting. We all vote, yes, we love this. What's the next step? Yes, so um, that this legislation draft um, was sent to uh, Maria Angel, who is currently the project head of the um, the project uh, meant to fulfill this resolution. Um, I got in contact with her several weeks ago and we've already had a dialogue of what is appropriate, what they want, and we're all on the same page. Um, this is just to put everything in writing and make sure that it gets done. Uh, so yes, they are very receptive to this. 
Um, they have actually already performed an audit on the music building signage and are currently pricing new signs. It is my understanding that once everything is ordered and delivered, they would just go in, take the old signs out, and immediately replace them with the new signs. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Senator Lee, go ahead. Hi, Paige. So you mentioned, um, you know, if this passes, they'll go through, ride the audit, and then order them and stuff. Um, do you have an estimate for how much that would cost and where the cost would come from? Like if it would be facilities budget or? Yeah, I have no idea what the cost would be. Um, Maria Angel has, um, through our emails, expressed that facilities would be covering this. Um, I was hesitant to put that financial burden on the facilities in writing um, just because uh, I know the university funding, uh, I don't have a complete understanding of it and where money needs to be. Um, but I do know that according to um, the laws of the land, they are required to find money somewhere to fix this. Senator Dow? I think the chief of staff brought, a, brought up a good point earlier in the meeting. Uh, do you think it would be uh, beneficial to attach names to send this legislation to? Yeah, and that's also another question I had for Maria, um, who's, uh, well, her team, um, but there are some other individuals and facilities that she's working with, and so I'm waiting to just get a list of names from her. Thank you. So I don't butcher your last name. Senator Abby, go ahead. Um, I have a question about the Braille guidelines. So are they um, required, like, this is standard throughout, like, everywhere? Yeah, the Braille Authority of North America is the authority on, on Braille signage. Um, legislation refers to it as where you need to go for the ADA um, to how everything should be formatted um, and, and placed on a sign. Thank you. Senator. Hi, um, this isn't really a question. It's just a statement. I would just like to say thank you for bringing this forward. Um, Pauline is actually one of my classmates. She's in my choir class and I see her and other people, um, visually impaired persons. I don't, I, I don't know how the correct way to say that is uh, like walking around campus and I'm glad you're taking the initiative to get this fixed. Um, I'm sure they're very happy for it. And I'll be happy to let her know next time I see her that this is going forward and going through. Thank you. Senator Lee, go ahead. Senator Lee moves that we go to the next item on the agenda. Senator Johnson seconds. Any objections? Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Senator. Okay, just bear with me momentarily while I confirm our entire agenda. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> Wait. Is that my help? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Already off to a great start, guys. Okay. Okay, so apologies. So, so um, do we have anybody who wants to present? College report. Well, uh, if, for the if, ones that if you go through the slides, it lists the order of the colleges. To present. First up, we have College of Education. OK, my question was more where the. Agenda in its entirety is at the top, but it's, it's the fine. first black. It's fine. OK, slide six. So who's presenting for College of Education? Senator Shiloh, go ahead. Hello, hello. Cool. So 
I can just dive in. I'm assuming. Hi, I'm Aaliyah, College of Education Senator. Um, Maria was originally ahead of these, but we did talk before she resigned about what we're going to be going over. So I'll just present that information. We've already met with our deans, um, the assistant, everybody um, in charge of the College of Education um, way early in the year, before the year even started. We've been working with them since summer. So um, we do have some things in the works. There were things that Maria was already um, working on as far as legislation. So I've been talking to her um, as far as what she still wants to be done so I can kind of take charge on that. She was on the diversity of inclusion and um, working with them on stuff to do for the College of Education. So I'll be in talks with them to see if we can, either if I can be a part of that, if it aligns with my schedule, or um, see if I can get the information that was already covered to um, continue what was already been done. Besides that, um, yeah, that's kind of all I have to report for now. Okay, thank you, Senator Shiloh. And I'm presuming Senator Brown is presenting for College of Engineering. Go ahead. Um, so currently we are working on the um, parking pass for Discovery Park that we had mentioned uh, during our mock Senate meeting um, during the retreat. I am also currently working on legislation to increase the number of outlets to Discovery Park. Uh, I don't know if any of you go there or not, but there aren't quite enough for the number of workspaces that they have for students and student groups. Um, and a, another piece of legislation we're working on is um, increasing the availability of the food pantry to include fresh vegetables. Hello. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Rachel, College of Info. Um, so just real quick, um, I've been emailing our Dean, Dean Kinshuk. Um, and so basically, um, at the direction of Devin, I'm going to be the undergraduate student representative for the College of Information's Diversity and Inclusion Council, which basically just, it's me and like a couple faculty members and we meet like four or five times a year to advise the dean on how we can improve diversity and inclusion within our college. Um, our first meeting is going to be November 10th, so once that happens, I will update you all on what we discuss. Um, beyond that, I've just been talking with my classmates. A big portion of the College of Info is the graduate program. We actually have like five times as many graduate students as we do undergraduate. Um, so I'm kind of hoping to reach out to the Graduate Student Council if they have a representative for College of Info and see if they'd like to collab on anything. But yeah, that's it. Okay, also before you go, Senator Johnson, just want to clarify something. If anyone has any questions about the college reports, you can ask them after each senator goes. We can also go back to any colleges that you have questions for. Any questions for Senator Lee? Okay, thank you, Senator Lee, and on to Senator Johnson. Okay, good, it is my college next. Okay, so, we have established one thing is very important. We established a group communication to where all senators can be more relaying a little bit quicker because I mean, I hate emails so much. The next person you have to be formal, formal, whatever. We have uh, met with some of our senators were able to meet with our dean. From what I heard, that went very, very well. We got some great communication, some great ideas to reach more of our constituents as well as our fellow class members. An idea going forward would be partnering with class ambassadors to where they uh, be able to get more directly input with our constituents. Going forth, we're going to be meeting with assistant deans or deans or anyone involved in that, as well as reaching out to the ambassador little group that they have and reaching out with them. So that's pretty much where we are and we're also I'm talking sorry. about. Can I add in? Can I interject? Yeah, Sophia was uh, actually at the meeting. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to give an update since I was in attendance with the meeting with Dean Brown. Um, so yeah, we discussed um, creating a better partnership with our ambassador program. Uh, the College of Liberal Arts is obviously one of the largest colleges here at this university, and there's a lot of student ambassadors that represent each individual college with, or each individual department within um, that college. So we really want to get connected with them so that we're providing better outreach for our students. Um, there's also a class inclusive excellence committee that um, Executive Dean Brown was hoping to um, get one of the uh, one of our class senators um, on. Uh, so we're still determining who will serve on that committee, as well as um, we discussed a lot of how we are um, just 
providing better outreach and support for the students class, obviously, um, that we're going back to more in-person activities this semester. Um, and so we wanna provide um, support for those first year students, as well as the sophomores who never really got um, a true first year of college. Um, so they discussed a new initiative they're starting where they are providing um, a kind of like how the Honors College has a, um, a, a room you can go in and study and like get snacks and like talk with people and whatnot. Um, so they are providing a room on campus where first year students as well as second year students in the College of Liberal Arts are able to go to to talk with someone, to ask an advisor about any questions they have about their major or their classes, as well as just meet other students um, uh, so that they, basically so that they're better supported here in our university. Anyway, that's all I wanted to add. Thank you, Grant. Thank you, Senator. Moore. No, thank you, Sophia. Does anyone have any questions on that? Will somebody. Ms. Speaker, the... I move to recognize the individual in the back. Does someone second? Senator Shiloh second. Okay. Go ahead, someone please give her a mic. We got to get more mics. The floor is yours. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. Sorry, that's a weird echo. Anyway, um, I am a class ambassador. I'm part of the Take Flight Department. So Can you put the mic a little bit closer to your face? Sorry. Thank you. Um, so I'm an ambassador for Take Flight, specifically in the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences. So my question to you is, what is the goal you want to get out of, um, I guess, partnering or connecting more with the uh, ambassadors? One of the biggest thing, and Sophia can bounce off of this one too, um, I believe the biggest thing that we want to get is more student involvement with us, as well as just making that connection, saying, we hear you, we understand you, welcome, be that, be, kind of be there for them, as well as help them with anything else they need. But the biggest thing would be letting them know that we're there with them and hopefully get involved with a, a SGA or other class initiatives or opportunities that they offer. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, I can bounce off of that if you don't mind. Um, basically, it just seems really silly for SCA senators and class um, and class ambassadors, and excuse me, you guys, I'm so sorry, class ambassadors to be trying to do the same thing for students separately when we could work together and provide, again, that bigger outreach, that bigger support. Um, obviously, we want all students in the College of Liberal Arts to feel like they have somebody that they can connect with, whether that be an ambassador or a senator just making sure that that person is there for them. Um, we also discussed having, um, briefly discussed, I, I am hope, hoping to reach out to um, the person in charge of the class ambassador program here in the next coming week. Um, just discussed how maybe holding events on campus and they could be very specific to the College of Liberal Arts and they could be anything that we really want it to be. Maybe we could even partner with the class professionalism um, events as well. And Again, just getting more students involved and and making sure that students um, have a point of contact and are able to um, be provided with the resources necessary to be successful here. Thank you so much. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, Senator Johnson. You're live. Okay, for the College of Music. Hello Senator again, Powell. everyone from the College of Music. I um, uh, just want to say last Monday, I met with Dean Richmond of the Com, um, and we talked about uh, a lot of student concerns that I received during my tabling a couple weeks ago. The biggest one was um, the facilities uh, with the practice buildings. A lot of people we're finding that there's no chairs or music stands in any of the rooms. So that's something that we're going to start working on um, and to make a plan for people to not steal them. Um, the next thing is I am going to be attending the Student Advisory Council for the College of Music in a couple weeks. So we're going to be talking about curriculum concerns um, is primarily what I'm going to bring to a table, which is something that uh, a lot of constituents have been bringing to me even before I was a senator. So um, that's kind of what I have uh, coming up. But additionally, just want to remind everyone that all College of Music events for the rest of the semester are free. So you can find information about concerts on the uh, UNT College of Music events calendar. Also, go to the syndicate and see the lab bands perform. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, thank okay. you, Senator Powell. 
Howdy, y'all. I'm Senator Luke, and I'm the senator for the College of Merchandising, Hospitality, and Tourism. It's a little bit of a mouthful. Only thing that can beat that college mouthful is um, TAMS, and I'm not even going to say that one. And so um, I've been working on figuring out how to communicate with my constituents, as I personally feel that the pe my, people in our college, while very social and friendly, are just uh, not very good at communicating with each other in our college. So I've been figuring out ways to like bring them together. Uh, I did attempt, I did make a Discord server and invited people in. Unfortunately, that's not going too well because I feel like most people, like some people in my college don't really know how to use Discord. So we're going to move over that one. And so I've been working more in in-person events and I've been collaborating with my intern um, uh, Rose and with um, David because he's actually minoring in our college on ideas and what we came up with is possibly doing a town hall for our college using SGA and they can just come by and like bring out their like what's the word their concerns their issues if any because while I do not believe we have any major issues and concerns that is also due to the fact that I'm not really getting any communication from my other constituents or hearing anything about that so having a town hall would able to be able to have any constituents bring up any issues they're having and then other constituents can also hear what they're saying and be like, oh, I agree with that or not. It's a good way. But I'm also thinking of possibly doing for instead of for before a town hall is hosting, like working with, together with my dean and uh, creating a movie night for create a more social event for our college because our college has events, but they are more for um, career and business um, settings. And then we don't have any really social events. So I'm trying to create one that's so you can like, you know, have grow close to the college. So thinking of like doing a movie kind of related to hospitality or merchandising like Ratatouille or Devil vs. Prada. And so we're working towards that. And at the end of the movie, we're thinking of doing a raffle setting where if you um, uh, fill a form saying like important questions like um, what are your major issues in our college? If you have anything to change, what do you like about our college? Or um, what do you feel like your needs are being met in our college? They would be able to enter into a raffle so that we can get so I can get information and figure out what's going on within my college. And so I have not been able to email my dean yet due to uh, uh, being busy with midterms, but I am finished my midterm uh, yesterday, so I should be good to go. Okay, any questions? Will somebody Ms. Speaker? Please recognize. Uh, I move to recognize the individual in the back. Senator Brown seconds. Okay. Floor is yours. Hi. So uh, you've made past attempts to reach out to your constituents. You said with like the Discord server and things like that. So I'd like to ask, how are you going to like make sure that people come to the events that you have planned, like the town hall, and so that they can kind of interact and meet each other? So I plan to be working more closely with my college in that one, and then hopefully they will be able to post the events on their social medias and put posters and flyers around the buildings that um, we CMHT students frequent so that they can order to see the event. And that's it. And also talk about it personally to all my classmates. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, Senator Schulte, go ahead for College of Science. Okay, hey guys, my name is Gracie Schulte. I'm the Senator for the College of Science. Um, so I know we have like four minutes, so I'm just going to keep this quick. Um, I have arranged with David, our Vice President, to meet with um, Dean Padilla next Wednesday, the Dean of the College of Science, um, to discuss just, I think it's kind of a, like an introductory, but you know, yeah, just to get to know her, her get to know us, that type of thing, so we can kind of build that relationship um, and see some change in the College of Science, hopefully. Um, number two, I met with um, David and Devin, like separately, um, to just discuss some issues that um, I see on campus and that I'd like to change and how to go about that change. Um, and then from there, number three, um, I am in the beginning stages of writing some legislation that is very, um, I feel like impacts a lot of students and especially myself and especially after COVID and just with things like that. Um, and then number four, I met with my intern, Alyssa, and we had lunch together. So yeah, any questions? Any questions before we start clapping? <laughs> okay, thank you, Senator. Thank you.
Okay, as um, Senator Cleveland Toro is not present, and I doubt anyone here has uh, a contribution of similar value, we're going to move on to shout outs. Any speed shout outs? Can, can I make an announcement first? Yeah, that comes after shout outs, but does anyone have a shout out? <laughs> Shout out to our new senator. That was really loud. Okay, great. Great job. See, that was a needed shout out. There we go. Okay. Announcements. Go ahead. I am the chair of the Senate Internal Committee. Uh, the committee has instructed me to inform the senators. Uh, we have ratified a code of conduct for the committee, and we have also ratified a Senate feedback form, which both of which I'll be publishing on the teams very, very soon here. So be on the lookout for that. The Teams form will be will be an opportunity for senators to share feedback, either anonymous, anonymously or not. Uh, feedback, complaints, comments, anything like that. So be on the lookout for that, and thank you. Okay, Senator How, oh, go ahead. Since it's announcements, you can just go yeah, ahead. Yeah, quick announcement, everyone. October 25th, uh, one of my pieces will be premiered at the College of Music at 7.30. It's a Monday. Uh, I'll put more information in the chat, but if you're interested in coming, please do. Yes, Senator Brown, you can go ahead. The speaker, I would like to bring to the Senate's attention a, um, a break in the code of conduct that was committed at the last meeting on September 29th, and I would move and I move that this be referred to the internal Senate committee. Okay. Ms. Speaker. Yes. Uh, I move that we change the adjournment time to 7.30. Okay, does anybody second? Uh, Senator Mosley seconds. Does anybody object? Yes, it is. Are you objecting then? Okay. Okay, so. We are now going to adjourn at 7.30. As always, please keep side talk to the minimum so that we can move forward as quickly as possible. Okay, so back to the motion at hand. Um, I would request um, our Sergeant at Arms expertise as to how to proceed. Give us a couple moments, please. Guys, guys, please stop. I just turned it off. In order to consider this matter of breach of our code of conduct, we would need to move into an executive session. So I move that we move into executive session. That would mean that it would no longer be recorded and the general public besides the Senate would have to leave. Senators have been sent a communique earlier today sort of detailing the process. Um, and I second the motion. Any objections? Point of order, before we move on to this, should we finish up our initial agenda? Is that completed? Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay, all right, thank you. Yeah. Um, no, no objections. Now we're that, we're back in an open meeting. I would have to cut out this part, Senator. Um, Senator Brown moves to vote on the movement to refer this to committee. Senator Shiloh seconds. Any objections? None. It's referred to the committee. Um, if there's no other discussion points or anything, I adjourn this meeting at 7.31 p.m. All right. Now let's enjoy our state of the undergraduate student body. <laughs>